Alrighty, let's begin. Let's do a formal fucking presentation. Show you all what I'm made of, what I'm, what I can do with my voice. Tom, fucking pay attention. Although, you two guys, are, you three guys are VIPs because you're all four-week natural graduates. Genuine questions about the four-week natural, you can ask Richard, Tom, or Dietrich. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Is that good? We've got to take a selfie to show Ryan. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, he's, he's doing it in Havar later on in the year. So uh, a, formal, a formal introduction and a formal uh, update to who I am and what I'm doing. My name is Alex, I'm the most experienced pickup coach in the history of the entire planet. I coached as a lead instructor for Real Social Dynamics since 2007. In 2014, I decided to break away to do a different type of program that goes for four weeks in a row. Instead of having three students a week, four weeks in a row, I take on nine to 12 students for four weeks consecutively and we all work together as a group. And the guys who have done the program can attest, it's fun. It's really fucking fun to have a good team of good guys all working with a coach all at the same time. It's brilliant. I just did it in Texas. I had 12 students there. Uh, I was in Thailand before that, Melbourne before that. After this, I'm in Croatia, working with Richard, actually, the fucking ripped, wealthy guy sitting in the corner down over there. Uh, anyone from the, the Amsterdam 4 Natural? Uh, the, two, the, the students here? They were busy tonight, I understood. Um, anyway, I love photography. I'm a professional grade photographer. I've got another company called Alex Media Studio. And because I got kicked off Airbnb because of good old Julian Blank, uh, <laughs> I bought a mobile home, a camper car, and I decked it out to be like a mobile studio. So I would do these jobs where I will uh, make film clips for musicians and do ads for vineyards and ads and uh, marketing campaigns for hotels around the world. For example, when I finished Four Week Natural in Havar last year with, uh, on your program, that's where I met that girl who was on my Instagram. So I, I drove through Croatia and I would go and say to these people, hey, me and my girlfriend have a media company. Can we stay at your beautiful five-star hotel for free and we make you all these Instagram videos? They're like, sure. So we just get really fucking drunk fly drones around and jump in the pool with GoPros and I get like free accommodation for it and meal vouchers and get to stay in these beautiful rooms with beautiful girls. And that's my alternative ego because being a pickup coach nowadays, it's like illegal and frowned upon and the fucking girls hate it. You know what I mean? Like, so, so that's why everything that I do is still kind of low key. I'm not making a big like marketing campaign out of myself. I don't want to do the same as RSD. I want to be smaller and more intimate and more closely connected with the students that I work with. And that's good for your development to work with a mentor who's very directly connected to you and invested in you. And not, I don't want to be worrying about my brand and my image to these unknown masses that I don't have a connection with. I'm a coach and what I'm most interested in is a long-term connection with the students that I work with. And that's why this format works really well for me. So yeah, I'm now moving to Holland. I'm gonna be here for the next five weeks, coaching my four-week natural guys here. It looks like we're gonna have six guys on the program, which is a good balance for me. I need to learn Dutch. I need to find out the clubs that I have to go to. Can you imagine me speaking Dutch? I can't wait. I was listening to Dutch fucking radio on the way in here. <laughs> like, oh God, I tried to read it. It was so fucking embarrassing. So oh, bear with me while I try to learn. And if any of you guys wanna teach me, I'm, I'm really willing to learn. I learned, I tried to learn Swedish, but then I tried to move to Sweden, but I got banned because of the, um, the immigration crisis. It took like two years to even begin to process me, so I had to quit that. Now I'm looking for a different home. Anyway, that's me and my life, and what I wanna to speak to you about today is my take on the stages of a night going out to pick up girls. The things that you need to know when you're going out to pick up chicks. I'm doing a program called The Mastermind, Four Week Natural Mastermind. And um, with, in The Mastermind, I'm putting together these new pieces of content to teach to The Mastermind group, and I'm gonna release all of this in September. So this is me practicing it, and then that way I can ask you guys questions about how you interpret what I'm, what I'm teaching you. So I wanna go through that, then I wanna tell you a little bit how to apply that, allow you to ask questions about it, Later on, you can ask me questions about anything that you can think of. And after that, I'll tell you about the Four Week Natural starting on Wednesday this week, which is going to be pretty fucking fun in the beginning. I won't get ahead of myself, but I'm really, I'm really excited about that. So here are the things that I know that you should do during night game to do the best possible performance. Now, a lot of this is pretty intuitive, right? Like it's pretty obvious. Go to the club, basically like the, the idiot's guide is go to the club, screen to decide, 
act non-linear and charge at the front door. That's the idiot's guide to night game. The advanced guide I'm about to read out to you, okay? And the good thing is when I break down all of these concepts and I kind of like uh, tangibly summarize these concepts, I can say to a student on the program, okay, I want you to deliberately practice this kind of takeaway to show evidence of screening, right? Do you know what that means? No, right? So I can say, oh, I can get you to do these individual things so that I can identify that you're on the right track and you're doing things properly. So here are the tool, here's the toolkit that I use, and this is gonna be recorded. It is gonna be on YouTube, so you don't need to uh, write all of it down, but we might as well go through it all now. Okay, you ready? Here we go. So when you go to the night game, when you go to night game, this is what you should do. Incidental approaches, six groups, honor the group theory, create familiar faces, screen seven points, especially including Instagram, three types of reactions, uh, implement takeaways, use physical expression. Uh, you need to make the decision. This is a big point. This is the pivotal point, is the decision, right? Buy a drink. <gasps> Fuck, buying a girl a drink. It's not even that expensive here. I mean, in New York, it's much worse. In Norway, I gotta do a four week natural in Oslo later this year. It, yeah, it's like 11 euros for a beer. What is it here? It's like three euros for a beer at this hotel, right? For a pint, it's like 11 euros in Kroner, Norwegian Kroner. Norway's fun though. Like honestly, if you wanna have a fun time, go to Norway. Have you guys been to Finland? Finland's so fun, you feel like guilty. A lot of fun. Um, Buy a drink. Willing to risk rejection, skin in the game, right? And then, the wet, have you guys heard of the wet floor point? Yes. You've heard of the wet floor point? Yeah. yeah, cool. Okay, you're following my content a little bit, wet floor point. We have to then start ruling out our decisions. You need to remember to not isolate, all right? And that's a big thing that most guys get wrong. In-game game, sub points. We're going to go to the sub points now. Merging, act with divided attention. Include random strangers, approach other girls in front of her, make sure that you then implement deep personality compliments, sexy girl dance time, who knows sexy girl dance time? Okay, good, I'm glad that you know sexy girl dance time. It was a little like, nah, for like 15 fucking minutes, acting like a, dancing like a fat fuck. Um, then the inception dynamic. Now this is a little bit advanced. Does anybody know the inception dynamic? Good, good. You guys are like hardcore Alex fans from, from back in the day. Um, the non-defensive matrix is part of the inception dynamic. The front door rule, obviously. Do you four-week natural graduates use the front door rule? Like, you guys, I guess you don't go out charging for girls that much. What's that? Second nature. All right, yeah. I think it's, it's gonna be in like the, the Webster's Dictionary one of these days. When I see a girl going to store, mm. <laughs> <laughs> the front shop rule. Yeah, exactly. In, in Thailand, the front door rule, the front door rule actually means like when your whole game plan is built around leaving the club with a chick, right? So we call it like the, the dark alley rule, okay? When she's going to walk home up a, up a dark alley, make sure that you're walking with her. Welcome in. Have a seat, mates. Thank Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. That's right. You've missed it, but we're recording it. Um, how's the signage to get in here? Probably fucked. Uh, how's the signage? Probably bad. Yeah, you ask her to do the desk clerk and he explains it, but it's not bad. Bad, yeah, yeah. Alex, keep an eye on your phone in case anybody's like wondering where this place is. Cool. Pay attention. Sit down. We're in the middle of fucking seminar. Um, frontal rule, manage all her relevant factors. Now, this is like after you've been in the club. Manage all of her relevant factors. It's best to invite all to the after, after party. If not, you go into hitting and hoping mode. Then... Alternatively, back to the first part of the plan, you need to be a man with a plan, then instant date, then qualification by pursuit, then point of no return, and that's the status quo. Got it? No. <laughs> now, look, I know, I know when I like, lay all this shit out there for you, you're not gonna fucking understand barely any of it, because it's not your job to be a professional pickup coach. But every single one of these little points, I can give you a really great insight into something that you can do better. And now here in front of an audience, you can question me on these ideas. I can clarify that, post it for everybody on the internet. Then I understand it better, coach my students better. And based on your questions, I can anticipate the difficulties they might have. That's why I'm bringing it up, okay? So the idiot's guide is go to the club, screen, okay, screen and try to figure out who you wanna to speak to, make the decision, dance around like a fucking idiot and then charge at the front door rule. 
That's the idiot's guide, the three steps. Okay, so let's break it down. I'm gonna give you some really good like little stories and anecdotes as we go through this. Okay, picture this, we're going to a club. What's a good club that I should go to? I'm 33 years old, I'm in Amsterdam. It's a Saturday night, where the fuck should I go? Where is Chin Chin? Next to Chicago, right? Chin Chin is Chin Chin and Jimmy Wood. There's a lot of space around. They do. Is it? Can you talk in there? Can you move around and talk a little bit? Oh, that sounds good. Fuck! Why did I think of that on Saturday? I was fucking drunk. That's why. I was having a good time though. Um, so, here's here's what's really important. Okay, who here honors the incidental approach? Incidental. All right. So gentlemen, the incidental approach is where you never have to have approach anxiety ever again. I, n I very, very rarely see a group of girls and will go over and approach them. Sometimes I will if she has like red hair and freckles. But otherwise, all that I do, all that I do is I'll wait till the girl's lining up at the bar and go and literally stand behind her while she's lining up at the bar, listen to what they're talking about, even in weird Dutch. And <laughs> weird Dutch, the past I, the east is my only, my, this joke never gets old apparently. <laughs> Uh, and I wait until I hear what they're saying and then I incidentally join the conversation while I'm going to the bar, not going to the girls. So that's what I use with my students to kind of take the pressure off them approaching in the beginning of the night. And you know, I get a water, I get a beer, whatever it might be. Um, and then I do my approaches that way. From there, the girls normally say, come over and sit with us, come and say hi. That's just the nature of the girl, okay? So I do a lot of these incidental approaches early. What I tell my students, when you wanna have a really good night, is you need to become familiar with five or six groups. What we discovered when we did like a statistical analysis of approaching girls, groups of girls in bars, when we approach every fucking girl in the bar, we found less than 5% were both attractive and available. Less than 5%. When we screened them, when we got to know them, they had boyfriends, they had bad logistics, they weren't in the mood to party, they had to work early the next day. In Thailand, there was fucking transvestites. So you never, you never knew, right? But we found that even one of the traps that most guys fall into is that you'll have a really good conversation going and you don't want to walk away. You're like, oh shit, I've got something good happening here. And you're scared to walk away. But what you have to do is create five or six options of groups early on, okay? Imagine the entire like framework of the night. There's the entry point, the exit point, and somewhere in the middle, Tom, stop fucking talking. You're always talking in class. Somewhere in the middle, there's what we call the wet floor point. Okay, this is highly critical, pivotal moment. When cunts are like fucking falling about and spilling their drinks on the ground, that is the pivotal point because that's when guys think that they're allowed to just go and approach anybody that they want. When the floor starts getting wet. Now in Thailand, when we were gaming at the beach, the students had a lot of problems understanding this. Alex, how do you fucking tell the wet floor points? Like, uh, when, the, when the, the sand turns brown with Coca-Cola. <laughs> fucking relax, right? <laughs> Actually, it's when the lizards start coming out. In Thailand, we're doing the game, and you're just, you're looking around, looking for a girl next to you, you know, you got an iguana, like, in your fucking face. Ah. So, <laughs> when, when the iguanas come out in Thailand, but you, you're allowed to do a lot of very sociable approaches before the wet floor point. Meet them, get the fuck out. Meet them, get the fuck out, okay? Tyler might even call that minimizing time in, in between interactions, but we call it creating options. So you have social abundance later on when you've made the decision. So imagine you do finally pick a girl and you've already got these other groups of girls who you're friends with who might have boyfriends, might be ugly, well, v v uh, visually unappealing. I don't know, not your choice. I gotta think of a better politically correct way of saying that. And then you wanna, you wanna speak to like five or six groups. Now, remember the group theory. My students always fuck this up. Imagine there's a group of three girls. Actually, you need to play like a game of tennis with their faces. Hello, 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 hello. Like you gotta be cruising between the three of them because it's almost like panning for gold. One out of the three tends to reveal herself as being more available than the others. Now beware of the fool's gold, right? When you're panning for gold. A girl with a boyfriend and the boyfriend is not there is usually the most open and friendly and enthusiastic. Oh, hi, nice to meet you, what's going on? Have a good night, yeah. She's like gonna include you because she has nothing to risk and nothing to gain. The girl who's single, you look at this guy Deirdre over here, Richard. Richard's fucking ripped as well, making bank, wearing this like secret society mastermind together. Check it out, www.secretsociety. Um, 
<laughs> like a little, a little pump up for Tim. Like the problem is if you are a guy like Richard or Diedrich or Tom, right? They'll go in and if a girl identifies these four week natural guys as being attractive, a girl who's single and looking will seize up and get a little bit defensive and a little bit testy. Whereas a girl who's not available will be super friendly. Oh, hey, Diedrich, what's going on? You gotta meet my friends. Let's all get drinks, let's have fun, let's be friends. The single girl is gonna be like, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck up. So that's, that's the real gold. The fool's gold is the girl is unavailable. So that's why you've gotta be really good at walking away, right? So we, do, we have seven screens that we do when we're in a group. So when we're being most professional with our night game game, I'll go into a group, I'll quickly identify who's single and then figure out these seven things. What are you doing tomorrow? Uh, how do you know each other? How are you getting home? Where do you live? Uh, are you in the mood for alcohol? Are you, do you respond well to sex jokes? And do you have a boyfriend? The big critical ones are do you drink do you have a boyfriend and what are you doing tomorrow? Those are the three big ones, right? So I'll basically say, you look like a cat person because I want to find out where she lives. You look like a cat person. She's like, kind of, yeah. I'm like, do you have a cat at home? Do you live with your friends or your family? I live on my own. Oh, a perfect place for a fucking cat. Great. Cool. Are you going to be getting drunk? Is the cat going to look after you on a hangover tomorrow? Shots? She's like, yeah, we'll have some shots. My cat will look after me. Maybe she'll say, no, no shots. I've got to work tomorrow. I'm going to the airport, to go to Bali for a month, you never know. But saying shots or talking about drinks early reveals the kind of mood she's in that night, which is important. And then the last thing, we had a really good new boyfriend screen. Yes, we, we invented this, and this will work well for you guys uh, here in Holland. I'll say, hello, nice to meet you. I'm Alex, I'm an eligible bachelor. I'll say it that way, or this is my friend, Richard. He's an eligible bachelor. And the, we're, we're talking like, hi, I'm single and looking in a kind of a playful, off the cuff sort of way. And the girl's like, oh, well I'm not an eligible bachelorette, but my friend is. And so we're kind of doing it in a playful framework. You never want to say some shit like, oi, are you single? If not, get the fuck out of my face. I'm looking for someone who's single, right? So that new screen has been good. And we can do this super quick with six groups to find out who's available. And I'll say to my student, imagine you're a student on the program. I say, all right, mate, what's your fucking name? Is that a Dutch name? No, it's not. Where's it from? It's uh, Turkish. Uh huh. Boran, I need to, we call it Cambridge Analytica. You know what Cambridge Analytica is? <laughs> data mining. So you're going to the fucking nightclub and you're data mining. Go and find out the data in that group, that group, that group, and that group. Get back to me within 25 minutes. And I'll go with you and I have to drag you out of the set because what happens is like a boxing match. You get into the set, you're having a good fucking time, having a cool time and you forget what you're supposed to be doing. The problem is if you forget to data mine, this sounds so bad on YouTube. <laughs> like all the, girls, all the girls are a data to us. Like, um, you go in there, you're data mining, you're like, dude, stop having a good fucking time. You're just gonna make friends here. And sure, it's great to make new friends, but if you're here to pick up and meet a, a girl that you can have intimate adventures with, you need to know who's available and you need to give yourself the best choice, right? So I'll pull you out, go to the next set. Now, what's really, really revealing is when you've got a good thing going on with a group of girls, out of nowhere, you're like, hey, what's going on? We're having a great time. You know what? I'm intruding. I fucked up. It's girls' night. Me too. Hashtag me too. Have a good time. You just start walking backwards, and it's quite funny because the girls are going to be like, no, 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 come back. Everyone else is a fucking creep. That's funny, and it reveals a lot. You know, I'll go and sp I was speaking to some girls on the weekend, and I would do my takeaways, and some girls like, no, come back. And other girls are like, they can't understand my accent. They just wouldn't, they didn't really need me to be there or want me to be there. I got progressively drunker as the night went on. I'm so fucking stupid. I was like talking to these Australian girls uh, at the, uh, in Red Light District at a bar and they were pretty drunk. I was like, oh fuck, there's a virtual reality Formula One gaming center next door. I'm like, stop, I gotta go play this like video game halfway through the night and then I come back and I lost that set, as it turns out. They didn't have any Wi-Fi. So, yeah, this is one of the problems of the red light district is virtual reality gaming. So, <laughs> running around being a, bit of a, being a bit of a fool. So, the takeaway is very, very important. Now, um, it's, I did the, the video blog about this recently, deliberate logicality and physical expression. It is really important that you can show that you can be physically expressive early but dude, you, I was just in Austin, Texas. And you know, you know how like, okay, let's do a bit of American shit talking here. Anyone here American? No. 
So you know how in the Netherlands you're smart, you're polite. We've got some Germans here, some French, I'm sure. Smart, polite, socially aware. In America, no. And these Texan guys from Austin, hey Austin guys, good to speak to you again. They are learning from one source and one source only. A very loud Canadian redheaded man. He's like, get in there, cut the space. Oi! <laughs> Holy fuck. And so I've got like 12 American students. <laughs> All of them are like, oi! <laughs> like, all to the same girls over and over again. And they had concluded that the more, like, the more aggression and the more physicality that you put onto a girl, the more they think they like that. And so my American guys were just burning all the sets up. And I was like, dude, fucking relax. It's all about the exit strategy, not the attraction strategy. Is anybody here like looking for attraction in their game? You go, to the, you go and do your approach and you're looking for attraction. Surely. Come on, raise your fucking hands. Because if you're looking for attraction, you're getting a green light. You're getting reinforcement. You're getting some encouragement from the girl. But the girl, if she's giving you attraction and she's being kind of polite and friendly, whatever, that shows that you need a green light to keep going. And she senses that. So one of the parts of this little spiel that I'm talking about is to, is to have divided attention. To have divided attention. So you're speaking to a girl and she gives you attraction, but you don't buy into it. You're just enjoying the attraction, but you've got divided attention. You don't want to reinforce her attention. Otherwise, you'll kind of climax that social interaction too quickly. So... Attraction is not the answer here. Familiarity is the answer. I, I say it all the fucking time. It's one of my biggest insights. If you can have familiarity, spend the night with the girl. She can give you attraction by all means, but don't get sucked into that instant gratification. You need to be a guy who looks like he's continuing to create choices for you. This was a huge revelation. I've got to write this down, actually, the fear. No, I wrote it down. My American students, and they were all kind of like intermediate almost advanced, but not quite. They were like, Alex, how the fuck can I get the girl if it's not operating on attraction? And I had to even think about this quite hard because some of my students there were, were lawyers and they were very clever, very good with English and they were game fucking fanatics. They were game sickos, right? One of these guys, he paid double the money of the four-week natural to do every session. And this guy was in kilos, like a hundred and... 155 kilos? I'm 90, right? He was about, about my height. He was a big fucking guy, right? And never before have I been more Jesus than when I worked with this guy. I'll explain in a second. But he's like, so, right, I'm a nice, he's like, Alex, I'm a nice guy. I'm a lawyer. You know, I'm dressing well based on your, your advice. And I'm having a chat to these girls, but I'm not looking for attraction. How the fuck do I stand out from the other guys in the crowd? What, what makes me actually get the girl? And I said, well, obviously, you're going to leave with the girl at the front door at the end of the night. That's the game plan here. But how do we make that more immediate? A new concept that we talk about a lot is called the Trinity. The Trinity. Have you guys heard of it? I speak about it recently. I don't blog it much because I'm just fucking partying and fucking around. But the Trinity is the, th the three big things that drive attraction or drive, like, good game with a girl. Sexuality, using sexual commentary and comments and ideas physicality being able to you know express yourself physically and negativity so you need to be a nice guy plus the trinity just saying you're crazy you'd be horrible in bed don't you know don't stand too close to me then you've achieved the trinity you're crazy you'd be horrible in bed stop it that's it that i just did it there right you're attracted but the real kicker the real kicker is the the fear of a loss factor right imagine the fear of loss factor. Imagine I'm a nice guy having an even, cool chat to everybody and I'm really enjoying what's going on between you and me, but at the same time my attention keeps getting divided to your friend or another girl or whatever. Bear in mind this is all before, before the wet floor point. This is all before the wet floor point. It's her fear of losing your attention that's going to light a fire under her ass to not want to lose your attention, right? So... The classic fucking example, and I need to get this through every student's head, is that nobody is motivated by gain. Everybody is motivated by loss, obviously. If I was to give one of you guys here 10 fucking euros, I think, do I have even 10 euros? You're like, no, I don't, I don't need 20 euro. I don't need it. Fuck it. Take it, Alex. Keep, keep your 10 euro, 20 euro. But if I stole 10, 20 euro from you, 
You'd be like, what the fuck? Who the fuck are you taking my fucking money? The same with women. The same with humans. The same with your dating life. Now, on 4-Week Natural, I know, Richard, we're, we're going to do it in uh, next month. I basically say, Havar is a different story, but in a city like Amsterdam, I say on the 4-Week Natural here, we don't want to expect any results for the first 16 days, the first two-weekend span, right? Because... A girl doesn't know that she's missed you until she's got to know you, right? The hot ones, the ones with options. A girl needs to know that you have choice and she's being chosen by a man with choice. And if you're going to the text game funnel and the day game funnel and the Instagram story funnel, you can show that you've got choice, you're giving her a chance and she's on the brink of losing you after two weekends. That's when she packs her fucking handbag, puts on her makeup and her best underwear and she goes out and goes for a date with you. It's kind of funny, on the four week natural, in traditional cities like Melbourne, Sydney, or Austin, I'll go to the club on the third weekend of the month, right? The, like fr Thursday or Friday night. And I've got three students of the, the six guys on rotation. I get to the club. I'm ready for the guys to coach. I've got a plan. And they got, none of the guys show up because they all have dates. The girls that they met on the first week and weekend, they text the girls back and forth. And then the girls like, fuck. This guy, these students, they keep going out. I see it on Instagram. I'm going to lose this guy if I don't fucking take action. He's nice. He's not a douchebag. He hasn't been crazy impressive, but he has been solid. Then she jumps on him. And all of a sudden, the students go from nothing to all these options and all these results. And it's brilliant to see. Even, even in uh, uh, Austin, Texas, at the end of the program, the students are like, Alex, stop fucking coaching me. I just want to go to the club. You can talk to some fucking girls. Uh, enough, okay? I've got enough results as it is. In fact, one student, the Swedish student from uh, Texas, he fell in love with a girl and they, they traveled to Sweden together. He was really wealthy. 24, and he flew his girlfriend to north of Sweden to spend like the spring together. Another student, this is my Jesus work. I've never had a more difficult but successful mission. Whew. We're going to a little anecdote here. This one guy... I won't use his name, 37 years old, red, fucking red dog, like red as, red as can be, red face, red hair, balding, uh, beard, big guy, 155, 60 kilograms, emotional guy, he was, a, he was a hard customer as well, always dissatisfied, judgmental, a know-it-all, cried a lot, cried, you know? And I remember like clearly, and he and I have a really good relationship. He'll see this, obviously. I remember like, okay, so having this guy come on every single fucking session um, as a part of the deal was very taxing for me because he had a lot of very high consciousness questions that I can't answer, but I need to use my fucking brain. And because he's a big guy who's out of shape, he's unfit, and it's hard walking around 12 kilometers a day in day game and night game. It's fucking hard. And drinking. So you're tired, you're exhausted, you're emotionally worn out, you're scared out of your fucking wits. You're not naturally attractive at all. Although in Texas, bigger is better. So it kind of helps. Um, and he's already emotionally fragile to begin with. And he would just go into these random crying episodes, just sobbing, just... And can you imagine like a big guy like... <laughs> Alex, when, when will this work? When? Like, mate, it, it will, it will. I told you, we can master our behavior and our mindset now and our communication skills and you can master the game now. You have to master your body though. So I fucking screamed at this guy in the fucking group chat. I'm like, oi, fucking sign up for fucking CrossFit or I'm fucking done with you. Get your act together. I'm at CrossFit every day, 11.15, fucking get there. So, blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. Give me a yes answer. And he got there. He fucking came to CrossFit every day. He lost 20 kilos. 20 kilos in five weeks. It's pretty easy if you're already weighing like 165 and get down to 145, right? But, you know, uh, walking that much, eating healthy and hitting the CrossFit with me was fucking good, right? Now, I remember one time, <laughs> the second big crying episode, and this is all leading up to the beautiful crescendo. This is fucking amazing. One, well, in the very beginning of the program, we, we went to speed dating, Okay, I, I, I went the extra mile for this guy and I went to speed dating because at least that way I could like closely listen to what's going on. And I went there, there were six chicks. I have to go around, <laughs> I have to go around and sit to these girls. And here I am like the most experienced pickup coach in the world with an Australian accent, speaking to 27 year old lonely girls from Texas. And they were quite hot as well. A lot of girls would like move into Austin in the same way that a lot of people move to Amsterdam. So I sit down and I'd say the most ridiculous shit. 
I'm a, I'd say, hey, I'm just writing a list of how to not be a fuckboy so we can't fuck. And he goes, oh my God, you're so fucking funny. Oh my God. And then I'm like, nope, you're fucking done. You're crossed out. Okay, like ugly crisscross. I write like in front of the face. He goes like, no, oh my God. And then <laughs> disqualify them. And then I'm like, fuck all of you guys. I want to hook up with the, the organizer who's like this old lady walking around. And I'm like, can you imagine me just making out with the organizer in front of you? So at the end of it, there was like 15 men, 15 men and six women only. At the end of it, all of us go over to a bar uh, where we kind of did the organization and we have to hand in our cards. And all the girls are like looking at my card to see what I'm actually going to write. And so I have three, there's like 15 men trying to hit on the three hot girls. I'm like, oi, Amanda, Mary, and Mary Jane, or whatever their names are, do you guys want a, a drink? So I buy each, all three of them a drink at the same time. The other 11 men, they're kind of fading away at this stage. They're like, <gasps> and I have like the three hot girls around me, <laughs> 11 guys, like just confused and angry. And the big fat guy, he's like, <sighs> he's like, what the fuck do I like? It. I'm like, I'm just showing him how it's done. And they, the girls were bitching about him as well. The girls were being a cunt. They were talking shit about my big friend, my big guy. Anyway, buy the girls a drink. The girls are like, what are you going to do with your card? I'm like, you know what? Rip. I just rip the card in half and throw it on the ground. The girls are like, what the fuck? So the girls all get sad. Anyway, me, the big guy, and like 11 of these fucking men walk up to the club, which is about two blocks away. Uh, and I'm like the fucking Pied Piper, like leading us all on the merry way up the street. The girls are like bitching for my attention. They're trying to make me jealous with other guys. And then... We go there, I choose one of the girls, beautiful redhead called Lindsay from Chicago, go for the makeout. The other two girls are like angry, they put their glasses down and leave. They're not interested in any of the other like nine men who are hanging around. And then I'm on session with the students, we have to quickly go downtown and um, the big guy gets lost in the fray. Like he just doesn't keep up for, for whatever reason, I'm working with the other students. And he just collapses and he's like crying on the side of the fucking street. People are like asking him if he's okay. And you know, he's like a big fucking guy. I'm like, he, he wails. Anyway, we go to, I, I work hard on him. Many crying episodes later. And <laughs> Friday night, he goes over to speak to a girl. And she has like a redneck boyfriend from Texas. And the boyfriend's like, oi, dude, fuck off. And he's like, hey, it's up to, it's up to her if I fuck off. And the girl's like, eh. And so the, the boyfriend walks around, grabs him by the back of the neck and pulls him to the ground. It's like the fucking Hulk falling over. And he's all rolling around on his back and crying and wailing. Then, he, then he, he gets really fucking angry and he tries to fight the club owner. And he's just wailing and screaming. And I have to calm him down. He's like, Alex, I didn't do anything fucking wrong. I'm like, mate, I know you didn't and I know you wouldn't. I know you didn't know you. I'm fucking pressing charges. I'm like, okay, calm down. Okay, let's just have a fucking breathe. Let's just see what's going on. Let's relax, all right? So this, like, this has been my, my job, for the most part on Four Week Natural, is to reassure your concerns, to reassure you that everything will be okay, that this will work for you, that you can make the system work, that your own concerns and insecurities are natural and they will be overcome and you will it will yield results, right? That's my job is reassurance mostly. Obviously all the skills and the rest of it, but for the most part to, to reassure you when you're emotionally tired, frustrated about life, about yourself, about women, that's my job. Anyway, we go to speed dating. I wire him up, right? I put the wire on him so I can analyze his conversation. And I, we're, ro we're rotating around and this time it's speed dating for like 33 to 43. So I'm the youngest guy there and I'm speaking to these old ladies like, what the fuck am I doing here? And I quit. I quit speed dating. I'm just sitting at the bar listening to his conversation. And this lady walks in. She's like Hungarian looking, 34 years old. She's got like this lovely kind of Mediterranean swagger, long sparkly green dress. And the big guy fucking gets up off his, off his speed date. So he gets up, walks over to the bar and he's like, hello, good to meet you. What's going on? The chick is at the speed date. She's like... I'm, I'm glad he's gone, but fuck, who the fuck is he to walk away from me? And I'm like, ooh, good move. I'm listening in here. And he's doing all the right things in conversation. One thing that I loved about this guy, even though he was emotional, he wasn't in spectacular shape, but he worked on it every fucking day. And a lot of the time he would have freakouts. You know, sometimes people have freakouts, especially if you don't feel empowered in the situation that, he's, that you're in. But what he would do is he would, I would say, look, you're having a freakout. He would acknowledge that and say, look, here's how we're going to re-manage this freak out. And he would stop and he would listen. He would take a deep breath and said, okay, fair. 
fair. I hear what you're saying. I'm going to fucking do what you say. And he did it. And he got really good at everything that he could control. Goes over to this girl and his conversation was awesome. He, one of the rules on Four Week Natural conversationally is to always speak about the future. What you will do, what you could do, what might happen. If you speak about the past, it's a dead end. It's black and white. It's boring. But if you speak about the future, it's colorful conversation. So he's just making these like outlandish statements that he's running for politics, that he's got a sex first policy, all this funny weird stuff. And he's like, in Texas, bigger is better. And that's when I've got my pants on. You should see when my pants are off. Just throwing down this fucking gold. And I'm like, yeah, this is fucking awesome. And then he takes her by the arm. It's this like movie, kind of takes her by the arm. She hasn't even got a drink yet. He's like, I know a place. And he, he's like, he kind of shoves it in my face. He's like, Alex, look where I'm going. Pulling with a pizza. Goodbye. I'm like, what the fuck? This is awesome. You're doing it. You're like, you're like, it's like, like Peter Pan, like, you're flying, Peter. You're flying. And off, off he goes. I'm like, fuck, what's going on here? Her, oh, hinge is going off. That's good. Um, it's really unprofessional when I'm, like, talking to girls either on a date and I'm getting, like, Tinder and hinge messages. Got to remember to turn that off. And then he, he takes off and he, he goes downtown. They have a couple of drinks. They spend the night together. They go back uptown. To, he drops her off at the apartment. He gets home. He gets home. And he's in bed with this lady, okay, and just, like... The guy's lost the 20 kilos. He's flying. He hasn't had any action for a long time. Has no friends. He's in bed with a fucking babe. And he's like, Alex, we're not having sex. Why aren't we having sex? Why the fuck are you texting me if you're in bed with a girl? I'm not going to tell you how to have sex with her. Maybe it'll happen tomorrow. Just enjoy her for her. And maybe it'll happen another time. You can't control the sex part. He wakes up the next day and they, they get together. They go all the way. And honestly, I didn't think that it would happen that quickly. But when you think about it, big guy, good job, great personality, warm-hearted, man with a fucking plan. He's a pretty big guy, you know, he's got a bit of a belly, but a woman doesn't care so much about that. It's just being a great guy, good personality and having a plan. And he was very, very appreciative of her, very intelligent guy as well. And for him to get the result, even I was like, holy fuck. Two weeks after the program, he changes his Facebook status to in a relationship with and now they move fucking together in Washington. I can't fucking believe it. I'm like, fucking yes. And the thing is like, okay, all the program, all the guys in the program in Texas, they actually signed up from this free tour. I had eight of them sign up from the Austin free tour two days before the program. And they were all like Tyler, Tyler robots. Oh, fair enough, you know, they, they go to all the Tyler programs. And after I converted the big guy, they're like, okay, tell me what to do. I want what he's got. And then they all get in fucking results with like, dancers and strippers and Austin's good because you can go out seven nights of the week to these arcade bars where you're like shooting basketballs and doing shots it's spectacular so yeah I just want to tell you about the Jesus story of using your fucking brain to get the game going in the right direction based on my experience it was a, a brilliant and beautiful thing to see anyway that's the end of that story back to oh Taryn back to, back to what I was saying right <laughs> How do we get to that tangent? Tangent of glory? Anyway, the decision, gentlemen, the decision, the decision. One thing that when I coach you, for those who are going to do the four-week natural, you need to make a decision, right, of who you want to play for. So if you decide on one girl based on your Cambridge Analytica, your know-how of what you're trying to do, if you decide on her, I can say, okay, uh, we collectively are looking at that individual girl Here's what you need to consider if you want to try to take her home out of the front door. What's going on with her friends? What kind of a mood is she in? Who can you make her jealous with? These are the questions that I'll ask you. And then I say, okay, I want you to be non-linear, non uh, non-linear, divided attention, and include all of her friends. And now you know your only plan is to be the guy who leaves with them at the end of the night, right? So you want to do a bit of what's called in-game game. So once you've decided on that girl, be involved with her, but include a lot of other people. If I ever see a student in isolation, I fucking grab them and push them back into like a group setting. Never isolate a girl. We call, we call that the defensive matrix, okay? So there's two ways a girl can think about a guy who she's met in a bar, defensively or not defensively, right? Imagine you've got a really good thing going on, Edward Snowden, look-alike over here. Um, you've got a good thing going on, and you're starting to game the girl. You're starting to invest into the girl. 
Now, if she feels that you're investing into her in the same way that if any of you, any of you have had a gay person hit on you, you're like, whoa, slow down, slow down. I'm not gay, right? You have a defensiveness. You've already, put up a, you've already created a defensive matrix. But if you're acting like you don't know what you're doing and you're not trying to accelerate the interaction in that moment, if you're just kind of floating along, including our friends, buy a drink, have a dance, include other people, up your sleeve, you've got the idea that you are going to leave with that girl later. That's the idea. That's the hope. Um, but you're not presenting it that way. Then you create really good game. That's really good game, especially if you're including other people because then she fears losing you and she can't work you out and you're, non in, you're non-invested. Once in a while, pick her up and show her that you can once in a while, but otherwise don't. Another good way to show her is be, you know, be friendly to everyone, but only buy her a drink. Save your exit strategy for later. Now, this raises questions. If you're under 25, you almost do want to claim the girl so she doesn't feel like you're fucking around with her. If you're over 25, you do want to kind of stay aloof, show that you have options, and then later on she gets chosen by a guy with options. Obviously, you should have already screened her to know that she's single, that she's in a party mood, that kind of thing. You're just lining up your exit strategy, right? So, with the buying of the drink, this is really, really important. And I, I offer probably 20 drinks a night, but buy maybe one or two. So imagine you do decide on a girl and you think, this is the chick that I want to go for. You want to start ruling her in or ruling her out. So you like the girl, you say, cool, oh, my drink is finished. Let's go to the bar and get one. And if she's like, eh, no, I don't know, and she really is defensive against the idea, then you could be barking up the wrong tree, right? If she's not interested in getting that drink, you didn't have to buy the drink and you can insist one, two, three, four times to get her that drink. And if she still says no, you're still probably wasting your time. Now, let me kind of contextualize that. You're allowed to play for a girl who you really want, who's really hard to get, who's not really that interested in you. You're allowed to make a really good repeated attempt to get her in a polite personal space observing kind of way, you're allowed to and you're allowed to fail. That's okay. You can learn something from that. If I was coaching you and you're going for a really hot girl who's complicated to get to because she's got a lot of friends around her, she's a scatterbrain, she's immature, she's drunk, and she's you know a hard customer to work with, that's a fair game that you and I are going to play that together, me as the coach, you as the student, and you're going to try to get that chick, then we can learn something from that. And we go all the way to the end of the night. We include her friends. We include all the obstacles that are relevant. We don't get anywhere. Well, we learn something. We can talk about that. If you don't make the decision, what happens is you just kind of trawl around the club hoping someone's going to work out. But the thing is, it's, you're never going to have a committed uh, connection with the girl. You're never going to have fun and a game plan. And oftentimes, if you're just trawling around the club hoping for the best, it's going to be a half-hearted approach here, half-hearted approach there, and the girls are going to feel like you don't really give a fuck, right? So you need to be more authentic, risking rejection, having skin in the game. You guys know what that means, English second language? You're risking having your emotions hurt by actually making an attempt to get the girl, and she's like, nah, you need to risk that. And I had some of my really good students in Texas, guys who were sleeping with a lot of girls, that had this tough guy ego and they were never being fun or goofy or letting themselves show, show vulnerability because they couldn't take the idea of rejection, even though they were very young and very successful. Anyway, so that being the case, it's really important. If the drink, if the girl goes for the drink, that's great. That counts for a lot. And in this day and age, if you buy her a drink, she might buy you a drink back. I know in Holland that girls might have a policy that guys should never buy them a drink. Is that a, is that a thing here? In Sweden and Norway and Denmark, it's such a thing. Exactly, yeah. Exactly, if you buy a girl a drink, she buys you one back. Yeah, exactly. I, I like, I honestly think of all the countries that I've been to, Holland is the best country, or the Netherlands is the number one country in the world for uh, education, infrastructure, intelligence, progression. Smartest people are here. So give yourself a pat on the back. I, you guys probably are the best country in the world at the moment. Sweden is a, sec a close second and Australia maybe third, in my opinion. So, deep personality compliment. 
deep personality compliment is you make sure that the girl you've chosen, you tell her what you like about who she is, brave, adventurous, insightful, stylish, a good judge of character, anything about the personality, you've got to include that. And then sexy girl dance time. Sexy girl dance time. And this, when I first started doing Four Week Natural in Sweden, 2015, I realized, okay, I've got a student, he's got a good thing going on with a girl, but the club doesn't close for 45 minutes. What should he do? What, what happens now? Yeah, he's including other people, he's including the friend. Um, she likes him, he's having good divided attention, he's being non-linear, and when I say linear, I mean when you meet a girl, you're trying to get her from A, from the point of meeting, to B, to the bed. That's linear. You want to be non-linear, right? And that is include a smoke, include a drink, include other people, do little takeaways, act goofy, um, judgmentally love her, judgmentally hate her, things like that, non-linear. So sexy girl dance time, and I've not realized this until recently, and this is kind of a sad thing, is how inferior people feel, or w women feel, in society, in education, in the workplace, the feelings of inferiority. Do all of you men, all the men here in the audience today, sometimes feel inferior in life? Education, in your family, with your friends, in your workplace, obviously sometimes we feel a bit fucking inferior. Especially, a good example, has anybody ever felt like racially inferior? You know, I do as an Australian in England, because I'm a convict in England. Maybe even if you're like an immigrant to Western Europe, you feel those little feelings of inferiority. Well, imagine that from a girl's point of view. In the workplace, in, the, in business, in relationships, a lot of the time she will feel really shitty and inferior. Ryan, uh, who used to work with Four Week Natural, he did this brilliant seminar about how men versus women consider themselves academically, emotionally, yeah, you guys saw it, um, aesthetically, willpower, and women rate themselves like 2.8 out of 10, and men rate themselves like 7.5, right? So sexy girl dance time is the one 35 minute block of the week where a girl can feel not inferior. She can be the center of attention and she can feel admired by you, right? You go to the dance floor, I say to the girl, oh shit, I love this song, this is a cool dance club, let's go dance for a little while. And I get my drink, I get her, and then I just create space for her to enjoy the music, no pressure, and to be as sexy as she can imagine. Fuck yeah. I've got this beautiful girl dancing in front of me. Um, I've got a good story about that, actually, at Tristan's wedding. <laughs> I've got a, a fucking awesome story. You're at the dance floor, and uh, the girl's having a great time. And because you're dancing with her, not like all over her and not escalating, but you're just creating an aura for her to be a princess, then other men won't approach her, and she has everything she's ever wanted. And you know... You know, in terms of validation seeking, sometimes you all want to get validation from somebody, right? You want to show your, your, your mates that you've got a hot girl or you made some fucking money or you did good at your job. Well, that's the same for the girl. She's like, fuck, I look fucking hot. This guy fucking loves me. Maybe you fuck her, maybe you don't. Maybe you hook up, maybe you don't. But she loves that admiration. And my American students, my, my Tyler students say, but Alex, isn't that low value to admire a girl? I'm like, fucking bang, fuck off, shut up. <laughs> yes, you're allowed to admire a fucking girl, okay? It's not low value, you are enough, all right? So uh, dance with the girl, admire the girl, she get really worked up, really horny, and then what comes next is uh, the front door rule, right? So let me just check my little thing here. I won't talk too much about the inception dynamic, that's basically the girl, you leading, leading the girl to wondering, why isn't this guy making more moves? Imagine there's a guy, if you're a guy and you're making a lot of moves, the girl will have a decision matrix, a defensive matrix. But if you're not making that many moves, but you're staying involved with her with divided attention, she's getting a mixed signal. She's like, this guy's giving me attention, but he's not making the move. And if you can trigger her to ask this question, why isn't this fucking guy making a move? He's tall, he knows what he's fucking doing, he's giving me attention, he bought me a drink, He's not scared of me because he just fucking dipped me a minute ago, but I keep losing his attention. I'm going to make him like me. And then you've got her. Like you've, you've got her bought in, right? So that's the willpower that's required on your behalf is to do just a little bit less intent and linearness and, you know, uh, intentfulness that, you know, uh, 
old pickup theory used to talk about because you know that you need to leave the club anyway, right? You're going to leave eventually because the girls get sore feet, they need to get some food or whatever, whatever. So that's the inception dynamic. You're trying to plant a question in her head that makes her game you. If, oh yeah, in terms of like the after party, in terms of the after party and taking your girl home, invite everybody. So imagine you've got a good thing going on with a chick at a party or whatever. Try to invite everybody to the after party, everybody to food or whatever. Try to keep everyone together as much as possible because that will urge the girl to isolate herself. We need to be, there's a new terminology that we use called the status quo. And the status quo is when the girl, when you assume that you would never sleep with a girl on the first day that you meet her, okay? In backpacking lifestyles here in Amsterdam, one night stands happen, right? But if you are Dutch citizens and dating Dutch chicks, they actually like to bring their A game to the first bedroom encounter they have with you. So if you meet the girl in a nightclub or at a party or even on a date, they generally don't want to have sex on day one and then they want to bring their bedroom A game to the next scenario. So the status quo is that you can never have sex on day one. Maybe, sometimes it happens, maybe, sure. But if you imagine that it's not, you act far less desperate, you don't create a defensiveness matrix in the girl, and then she gets a chance to game you. So it's a, imagine that you're playing on a foregone conclusion that you cannot get the girl. Imagine, just like store that in your head, how much fun would you have knowing that you're not at the risk of losing the opportunity for sex. I'm never at the risk of losing sex or losing the girl. I'm never at the risk, so I'm never in fear. I can always have fun and keep going. So this is a really big thing, the status quo. I talk about it a lot. And I actually <laughs> I had one program, one student on the Four Week Natural in, uh, in Austin, and this is what he said. He's like, Alex, Alex, I'm paying you for results, and results is sex, and I'm not getting sex. I'm like, do you know that's like a pretty rapey thing to think? And I decided in my mind then and there, I'm like, this guy's gone. Like, I, I, this is fucked. And then 10 minutes later, he's like, I want to refund him out of here. I'm like, done. You're out of here. See you later, buddy. So, that, like, even that thing, you can't, you got, like, this is a pickup seminar, sure, about meeting, seducing, connecting with women, but you have to take sex out of the equation. You have to. That's a human being's body. And it's quite liberating when you think, well, I can't make the end decision for her, but I can have a whole fuckload of fun doing everything up to that. I'll leave the intimacy decision to her later. You know, like Planet Earth documentary, you're like a stupid fucking bird with like colorful feathers and shit. Be that. Be a stupid fucking bird with colorful feathers. <laughs> have you guys seen it? It's like a, like a black bird with this little thing. It's like, doo -doo -doo. so that's, that's me in a club, just acting like a fucking moron. So <laughs> anyway, 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 so uh, I'll wrap this up a little bit and you can ask some questions. When the lights come up or when the girls start to get a bit tired, you know, clubs do close pretty late here in Amsterdam, be a man with a plan. You need to be able to manage all relevant factors. Who's getting in Ubers? Who's taking a train? Who's sharing a bicycle? Which stops do we need to make before we go home? What are the options for food or after parties or friends parties? Do you need to order extra alcohol? Do you need to get weed? Whatever it is, weed is legal here in Netherlands. <laughs> Someone's going to crack the shits. Um, you need to be able to, to manage all the fucking options. Does somebody have a parked car that you need to go and rescue? Who knows? So that's it. And the last thing is qualification by pursuit. This is a concept that's important that's overlooked. If, you know, a girl needs to walk two kilometers to get her bike for whatever fucking reason, and you are the guy who walk her to the bike, that's very valuable. You're qualifying her. You're telling her that she's special because you're, you're pursuing her. She's worth the time and the effort. It's really fucked up if you spend all the time with a girl in a club and remember the status quo. Assume her that you're going to get her that day. You have to assume that you cannot. Um, and she leaves the club and you stay in the club. She's going to think that you're going to try to go and just hook up with a different girl. And she's allowed to think that. It's a party night. But if you leave the club, leave your friends, walk her to a bike and then go back, sure, you can go for it when you go back if you want to, but at least you've shown that she's worth something to you. My American students are like, isn't it low value to follow a girl? No, it's fine, you're just being fucking normal. And if she's a great girl, she's great, she's a great time, so do that. And then you can come back and hit and hope, hope for the best, see what fucking happens. Anyway, they are all the elements of night game, all right? Obviously, enter the club, 
wet floor point, exit strategy, figure out, make a decision with intelligent screening. Once you're in, once you make a decision, in-game game, sexy girl dance time, personality compliments, and then man with a plan at the end of the night. The big things that most of you miss is not creating multiple options for yourself early on. Do your fucking takeaways. Okay, the other big thing that most students miss. Don't isolate girls. When you're talking to the girls, having a great time, oh, fuck, I'm Diedrich, I'm fucking cool and big, yeah, fuck. And then you don't walk away. You gotta say, oh, I know, I know you hate me, I'm out of here, see you guys. And you just walk away for no reason. And then you go and talk to three other girls, create jealousy, create other options. And if you do choose the Turkish girl, like later on in the night, like, hey, German girl, what's going on over there? You're German, are you? I can hear it in your voice. Um, and it, so that's the, that's the takeaway, right? Don't get me started on German girls. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe, maybe they like you. They fucking hate me. In uh, God damn, man. We, we kicked two German girls out of a party on the Fort Natural Koh Samui. Um, Sam, did Sam tell you about his, box, his boy shorts? Oh, no. The polar bear shorts? Did he tell you about German girls? Yeah, so... <laughs> we have a policy with German girls on Four Week Natural that if you meet them, just walk away. Go for the makeout or walk away because they just don't do anything. I think if you do speak Swiss, German or uh, Austrian, no, Austrian, German, then it's okay because you can connect a bit better. But as our statistics reveal that German girls are really a waste of time. Beautiful, but a waste of time. <laughs> statistically, statistically. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. You've got a language connection which, help, which helps a lot. Anyway, so... We, I was in uh, Four Week Natural Koh Samui uh, in Thailand, and me, Sam, Benny, we were over at uh, Nikki Beach Party. And I, I was uh, two nights earlier, three nights earlier, I saw a really cute little Russian girl, super cute, blonde hair, very perky. And I went and approached her on the beach, and I kind of confronted her, and then I did my takeaway. I'm like, you're full of shit, just walked away. It's like, hey, who the fuck do you think you are? Anyway, so I'm walking, the next night I'm walking to the club, and she's, she's standing at the front of a strip club and she's like, oh, there's that asshole. And I'm like, what the fuck did you say? I love you. And then she's like, oh, come in and dance later. I'm like, yeah, whatever. So go to the club, coaching the guys, I'm sober. And then the guys both take girls home, awesome. And I go into the, the strip club with the Russian girl. And she's like, oh, come on, baby. It would be like, it was like a $80 for a lap dance with her. And I'm like, 80 fucking dollars, make it 85, fucking come on. So we go into the strip club, uh, into the, the private room, and it has like one chair. And, I, <laughs> and she's like, ooh, sit down. And I do some like fancy um, Kino escalation, flick her arm around, put her down. I'm like, fucking sit down. She's like, what? And then, and then I start doing a full like naked dickhead strip tease. <laughs> like, <laughs> And she's like, what? she's like pissing her little Russian pants laughing. It's so funny because every, every guy goes in there for like a creepy Thailand experience. And I'm like, I'm, do, I'm like holding nothing back. Then she's like, you're ridiculous. That's awesome. I quit. I'm like, okay, cool. So she takes me out of the club. She quits her shift and we just go out and drink and hang out. I'm like, oh, fucking awesome. She won't kiss me. We're at a bar like a couple of blocks away. She won't kiss me at all. Um, she won't do anything. I'm like, okay, fair enough. And she's like, you're funny, you're cute. She keeps fucking biting my fucking neck, asshole. Pulling my hair, fucking around with me. We're having a great time. I think she's glad to finally meet somebody who doesn't take her too seriously, doesn't want to pay her for sex or whatever. Now, these Russian girls in Thailand, they get like two nights off every two weeks. And she, that was her night off the night before, uh, two nights before, and then the next day she has a day off as well. So we go to Nikki Beach, me and the two students and Sam from Ireland, right? So the Russian girl is there with all the strippers and she's like gaming me. I love it, I'm just like sitting back, having a drink, having a cigar. It's towards the end of the program. At the same time, I'm getting this attention from these, uh, <laughs> getting this attention from these German girls and she's trying to defend them away. And I had said to, to Sam, bigger Irish Sam, I'm like, dude, if you buy those fancy board shorts, like bitches will approach you. I don't mean the word bitches in that way. It's kind of like a flippant terminology. I'm like, man, if you buy those shorts, bitches be approaching you. He pulls on these awesome fucking polar bear shorts. They cost 300 euros. And he's just walking along and people are like, hey, nice shorts. Girls are like, hey, where did you get those shorts? Girls are coming for a selfie with the fucking shorts. It was ridiculous. I didn't think it would work so well, but it did. Remember Moritz bought the fucking shorts in Havar? 
350 euro and the first girl he sees when he's wearing the shorts falls in love with him and sleeps with him the next day. It was the girl who worked there. Yeah, yeah I know. I told the story a thousand times. It's like, holy shit, I'm going to get me some of those shorts and some Maurice, I mean some Maritz abs. Anyway, so we, the two German, these two German girls, they're like super wealthy, extremely rich, like all this like Louis Vuitton shit. They want to party with us at the resort on the other side of the island. So we drive them all the way across the island. One of them has a boyfriend and the one in the back of my scooter is like German. She's like a daddy's girl. Uh, she's voluptuous in a bad way. She's nutritionally undisciplined and cardiovascularly unexperienced, right? <laughs> so she's on the back of my bike. She's like getting into me. Uh, but at the same night, the Russian stripper wants to hook up with me in the resort. So we, we take them on an hour long scooter ride back to our resort, me, Sam, Benny, and the two girls. And then this girl, this German girl gives me a bad vibe because it takes me some time to check in, organize drinks. It was like a national voting day. Do you know in Thailand, on the day of the vote, there's no alcohol for like 36 hours. So I have to go and get some black fucking market alcohol, book into the hotel. And then the girls are like, you were making us wait 20 minutes. I'm like, cool, well, you've got a bad vibe. You're uninvited. Just on the spot, on the side of the road, I'm like, you guys are done. Sam, Benny, Russian girl, Russian girls, go into the, into the room. The girls are like, what? But we are one hour from home and we can just make up and da, da, da. I'm like, you're giving me shit about organizing a party and alcohol for you and we drove you here for free and you're giving me shit? No, 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 no. So we just walk, me and the students. I'm like, students, Aktong Zen Club. Let's go to the club. <laughs> so we go to the fucking club, collect these other girls and the Germans are like, what the fuck? They're still annoying me to this day. So that's the, I gave them a chance and still she gave me shit. I'm like, God, we had a really nice villa thing too. Anyway, anyway, questions. And so later on that night, I got to sleep with the Russian stripper, which was fucking amazing. Good for me. So any questions about the, the night game stuff? And then any other questions about anything as well? Yeah. Why do you say so deliberately to scream if she has a boyfriend? Mm. They might as well cheat. Is it like something you... In, like our ex in our experience, in our experience, girls... Um, who are seeing a guy don't often cheat. They don't go all the way. They don't actually meet up with you, go home with you and hook up with you. They'll flirt with you, maybe dance with you, maybe kiss you. Some, some do, 20% do. One in five might cheat. That's statistics from like years and years and years of doing this. So it's a judgment call. But if they have a boyfriend, it's better to befriend them and say, oh my God, you've got a boyfriend, you've got to help me get a girlfriend. Uh, of course you've got a boyfriend, you're so attractive. We'll be friends on Instagram and you can help me find my bachelorette. And she's like, okay, yay, that'd be fun. And then you've got somebody on your side. Um, but in my experience, it's been better for me to let go of a girl who's kind of involved with a guy and then go and try to find somebody who's wide open. Yeah, yeah. Other questions, my intelligent Dutch friends. Yes. Yeah, when you're doing your takeaways at the beginning of the night, how much would you invest? Is that until you reach a certain point? Of Cambridge Analytica, until I've got the data that I need. Basically, but to answer your question more thoroughly, I'll go over, I'll tell my story. I'm here, I'm doing this, I've got the night off. I've got tomorrow off, I'm showing my friends around town, bouncing off them to find out, are you guys in a party mood? Are you guys free tomorrow? Are you gonna have a big night? Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, find out about the boyfriend thing. Are you eligible bachelor, ba bachelorette? My brother's single, he's in Australia. He's fucking hot. She's like, I'm not the eligible bachelorette. So I want to find out who's available. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm interrupting girls night. Fuck, you guys have a stack of fun. You're fucking hot too, have fun. And I'll say like a nice compliment or something kind of fun, just to be able to come back to them later. I want to be like the man about the club who knows everyone. Yeah, Tom, you had a question? Mm -hmm. That being low value. Mm -hmm. but, like, I see there's like a fine line between going for it and showing them, but also not being like needy in the words in the sense of something. So, what is your view on that? Like, more, more precisely, where. Yeah, like, yeah. What, what are here's the, the answer. The yeah, here's the answer. What's the number one rule of like four week natural game? There's no reason you're not enough. So, being needy and you are enough, they don't fit together. So you can chase as much as you want because I know that you individually, you've got a lot of pride and self-respect um, 
And if you're chasing somebody, it's because you see them as an asset that you want to be close to, an asset and someone that you really value. Not You want them not because they're going to help you in life, but because you value them in life. You value them. And that is the difference. And I don't think there's very many people that you would need you individually. In this room, maybe some of you would consider getting a really hot girl. You would prove something to yourself. And maybe you need that. That is needy. But otherwise, what I tell the students in 4-Week Natural, when we get into that group think, you can't be needy if you are enough. You're chasing girls because you're really interested in them. And they're a lot of fun and they're worth your time and energy, not because they're gonna make you a better person. The reality is they're not gonna make you a better person, therefore the reality is you can't be needy. Uh, and that, that's what I tell students, you can't be needy if, there, if there's no reason you're not enough. And it's true. I get my fucking ass handed to me sometimes as well. Earlier, like last year, I got fucking rejected by a girl from Sweden who I moved, moved to Sweden to try to be with her. Completely fucking failed, and I think that I was needy, but I'm like, ah, oh well, fuck, I fucked up. I'm always going to play, chase the girl to, to find that uh, emotional connection. Even if it doesn't work out, fuck it. I'm going to play to win without worrying about being needy. Because the girl senses if you feel bad about the chase. She knows if you're feeling apologetic or creepy about it. Look, I'm nothing creepy about this. I really like you. I really want you. I'm making a play for you. And in the case of that girl who kind of, it turned out that I was a little bit needy, I said to her, thank you for letting me make a play. You gave me a really fucking good chance. It didn't work out. We had a fucked up language barrier. I feel a little bit heartbroken, but fuck it. It was good. It was worth the chase. And we got to hook up anyway, so it was good. <laughs> yeah, man. You yes, said uh, about 5% are hot and available each night, mm. uh, which is just screening for taking her or going out with her after the club, well, it, which is just, well, which is just cleaning for the front row rule. Uh, don't you, do you get numbers out of any night ever? Yeah, so to answer your question, to find a girl, an individual girl who in her life is both attractive and, you know, looking to date, meet guys and get to know guys, we would find that like only 5% of the club would be that. So imagine, you know, there's like a club full of attractive types of girls and about 30% of the girls are attractive, right? We would be able to go and talk to them. And I'm thinking specifically of the nights where we tested this in Sweden uh, and Norway and England, the clubs in England. And I'm talking about girls who are not so drunk they can't fucking control themselves. Yeah. Le girls logistically who are okay. Girls who are like sound of mind and attractive. It was only very few. And so what we would do is if it, it would depend, we, I would make a decision if I want to get a girl um, uh, and, and not that attractive girl who's still attractive who doesn't have a complicated situation she's only there with one or two friends she's open minded she's cool to meet new guys then I would stay with her leave the club get Instagram get phone number you know go to an after party together and then meet up you know the next day the day after or whatever so I would get the Instagram and try to do it that way or there might be a girl who's really hot surrounded by a lot of people in some VIP thing and I could keep approaching her and keep getting there and get to all of her friends and get her Instagram and then hook up with her either much later or even six months later from Instagram because my Instagram is good. Um, that would work, yeah. But otherwise, it's, there's always going to be girls in the club who are decent, decently attractive, who are available, like three-star, four-star girls, like a six or seven out of ten. And they're fun to party with. But as a professional pickup coach, especially when I'm recording like infield videos for my hot seat, they have to be really hot. Yeah, but if, if you go out and say 30% are hot and you get goodbyes but they are unavailable, mm. would you go for the number and yes. then after that yep. kill, trying to kill another girl? Or? Yes, absolutely. Especially Instagram. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Especially Instagram is like, it's so open and free to give to everybody. And when you're screening, I'll teach you on, I'll teach you on Four Week Natural. I get into my Instagram conversation Fucking phone going off on Tinder. Good. Um, I get into Instagram conversation because I am a photographer. And I say, cool, show me your Instagram. I'm going to judge it as a professional. And I look at it. I can learn so much about the girl so quickly. We really anchor each other's realities. And I'm always putting up stupid stories as well anyway. So, yeah, absolutely. You should get Instagram with everybody. Even if your Instagram is weak, just say, oh, my account just got deleted. I'm starting again. I'm Germany's hottest new Fastest growing Instagrammer, 75 followers, fuck yeah. I tell girls, I'm like, hey, 
I've got 110 followers. I'm going pretty well. The girl's like 110. I'm like 110,000. We went to the club last week where RSD Sarah was. And I didn't, I didn't know that Sarah was there. Uh, I knew she was in Paris and we, she and I were at the club just drinking, my, myself and my girl, Rachel. And then I was walking to the Uber. I had like already ordered the Uber, it was waiting. I'm like, oh my God, is that fucking RSD Sarah? And she's like, who the fuck is this weird fucking guy? So I run over in front of like seven students, put my arm around her and start escalating. And I'm like, Sarah, give me some fucking tips on how to get girls. And she, she just went straight into it. She was fucking awesome. She's like, well, it's all about the Australian accent. You've got to have confidence. You've got to be patient. Like, fuck, this is impressive. You're awesome. And she was like, I was on my, my toes because she's taller than me. And she's like, man, are you on your fucking toes? I'm like, yeah, sorry, Sarah. And then we went to the club. She and I were talking for about an hour, having a good time. She was telling me about the guys she dates and what she finds interesting in a man, which was really cool. And then I was like, Rachel, can you hook up with Sarah so I can film it for the internet? Rachel's like, yep. So she goes over and starts making out with Sarah. But then Sarah was a fucking smart ass. And she got one of her students or friends to say he's gay to make out with Rachel. Rachel, stop fucking making out with that fucking guy. Come back over here. And I go to kiss the guy. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, ah. It's a game of chicken. <laughs> you just, just yeah. So, you know, it's all, all fun and games, but she was cool. And me and uh, my friends in Australia had been an- asking so many dumb questions on Sarah's live streams. <laughs> so she's like, you're Alex Media Studio, you asshole. Anyway, anyway, other questions? Team? Yes. Um, do you screen for like age? I mean, you're what, like 33 or something? Yeah. yeah. Do you screen for age? And what is your like age range with which you think is like... A- the age question. The age, the age question. The answer to the age question is, is more about reality than it is about age. So if, you, if, if a girl is 17 and she has a full-time job, a nine-to-five job as a hairdresser or a makeup artist, she's in the same reality and same lifestyle as most adult men. If a girl's still at university in Utrecht or Rotterdam, Fuck, I don't even want to embarrassingly say it. If a girl's still in university and she's having a university reality at the age of 25, she may have difficulty understanding your reality if you've got your own job nine to five. Even then, some girls who are my age, who are you know, 30 years old and they have a nine to five job, they don't understand my lifestyle of driving around in fucking circles in a camper van taking photos, right? I'm an entrepreneur, it's a different kind of lifestyle. So it's more about reality um, than it is about age, uh, though there's kind of a significant maturing process that happens for a girl at about 22, but you know, there's no real hard and fast rules in this sense, who, who the fuck knows, yeah. Alrighty, any other questions? After I pack up all this stuff, we can hang out at the bar and have another drink, but let me tell you about Four Week Natural. I, I know that a lot of you guys have been checking out the website, I can see the the, the web traffic is here, but it's starting this Wednesday, gentlemen. I know that uh, some of you guys have done it before. You're signed up to do it again. Bram and Jesse did it as well, some guys from the community. Um, and the way that it works, what's, when, when it comes to your learning, it takes any human being about 14 days to really make a shift, right? I'm here to teach you game and cold approach pickup and confidence. And there's three things there's three things that I need to alter to switch inside of you to make you much better at game and to get what I get to make you a natural, right? Your behavior, your emotions, and your thoughts, okay? On day one, I can control your thoughts, I can tell you what to think, and I can tell you what to do, how to approach, what to say, how to do it, how to stand, posture, whatever. So if I, if I can control your thoughts and I can control your behaviors, and you're having real life interactions with people, then that can eventually fuck with your emotions. It can change your emotions to be self-trusting, confident, and kind of bulletproof. The problem is when I ask you to believe and act on the emotion that there's no reason you're not enough, I can say that to you guys right now, and who here genuinely feels there's, there's no reason I'm not enough to talk to any girl anytime. Who here believes that? I should have two hands going up at least. Yeah. They, they really feel like there's no reason I'm not enough, right? And that does take time, repetition, and reinforcement from an authority in the field. I had an Australian girlfriend come on my four-week natural in London. She was a kind of a left-wing, skeptical, bitchy girl. She wasn't a bitch, but she was bitchy. Laura, actually, if you guys remember her from like a few years ago, she came to the program at the end. You weren't there, Tom. 
And she shows up on the fucking program. She says to one of the students, why do you even do this program? I don't get it. I'm like, fuck off, Laura. You're supposed to be on my team. And I remember, I remember thinking, that's a good question. Why, why would a student do this fucking program? And the answer is, so you can learn as much about yourself from an authority in the context of pickup, women, dating, and personal confidence as you can in one month in, you know, in nightclubs and, and day game and bars and clubs. And that's really why these students do this program. I, on my website, I don't say that I'm a world leading pickup expert, but I do say that I'm the most experienced pickup coach in the world, which, which I am. And so when I work with somebody, I know that usually the first two weeks, there's, a, there's what's called a honeymoon phase. Everybody's like, yay, new friends, Alex is in town, we're gonna go to the bars, yay, honeymoon phase. And you're all energetic, enthusiastic, driven, open-minded. But what happens after about 12 days or two weekends is you hit a plateau, okay? You hit a plateau and we start to reveal what are your individual fucking problems? What are you scared of? What is your shtick? You know, like this uh, weird kind of things that you do. What are the common mistakes that you're making? Where are you losing out on your approach? What parts of your game are you, are you missing? And what happens after about 12 days is everybody hits their own dark phase where you need to face your own fears, your own emotional demons, your own willpower and your discipline to stay the course. And that's where I have to do my job. I'm like a pilot, right? We're, we're flying on the program, smooth sailing, clear weather, whatever, and then a fucking storm comes. And that's when I have to be an expert. Now, in the same way, when you're studying or going to the gym or you're on a diet, you know, you start your diet, you're all excited, you're all enthusiastic, and you're like, fucking this is gonna be fun, I'm gonna go to the gym, awesome. But then you, you kind of fall off the wagon after maybe one or two weeks. That's where the coach comes in. And that's when I have to, you know, reassure you of different things. Help you to, usually one of your biggest issues is an issue of motivation, confusion towards yourself, confusion towards the girl, and broken expectations that become revealed when you take massive action. That's when I need to teach you what I know and reassure your fears and concerns. Now, what I want every student to get out of the four-week natural is acceptance. Acceptance, right? Weird thing to say. But if you, when you have acceptance, you have positive vibes all the time. You never, you're never angry, you're never stressed, you're always open-minded, you're always loving, and you never have defied expectations. You're, you're gonna be the kind of guy who truly thinks, in regards to women, ah, it's all good. It's all fucking good, doesn't matter. You're gonna accept yourself, you're good and you're bad. You're gonna accept the world you live in, the reality, the clubs, the bounces, the money, the government, whatever, and you're gonna accept women in whatever form they take, whatever behaviors they have. They can be lovely, they can be bitchy, it's all good. And if you have true, triple acceptance, then you're always gonna be in a good mood towards women every fucking day. So what happens usually after the dark phase on the program? We talk about these concerns, about people's behavior, things that are fair and unfair, things that stress you out, and if you come into acceptance of the, that you can't control yourself, reality, or the girl, then you stop trying to control the reality, yourself or the girl, and you go with the flow, good vibes, you put out a lot of love, and all of a sudden you become magnetically attractive. You become a motherfucking natural. It's quite cool. Obviously when you're a natural, you have to approach and include people with what you're doing, but that's when you become a natural. That's what we, we call the enlightenment. Basically to summarize the enlightenment is you can, you and I can both go out, and I'm the most experienced pickup mind in the world, but you and I, we both have equally as much chance of picking up. Maybe my willpower is a little bit more uh, applied. I'm a bit more disciplined to get in and out of sets and to create options. But it all essentially comes down to luck. And because I accept luck, I'm more likely to always have a good mood with everyone that I talk to. Realize that, hey, I can't control if I'm actually gonna get this girl. And when you have that acceptance, you never get like a bad fucking state. Everything is fun. Everything is fucking fun. And that takes four weeks, five weekends to train. I didn't make it a three-week natural, I didn't make it a five-week natural, I made it a four-week natural, right? And that's how it works. You had a question? Nah, you remember that we went battling for the Julia Screen Store? I went on a date with her in Malmo, did I tell you? 
I went, I went, went and met her on a date in Melbourne. She's fucking awesome. Yeah, Tom was trying to battle me for this fucking 10 out of 10 Swedish girl. I was like, fuck off, peasant. Good fucking luck against me. By the end of the day, I'm sitting there, me and all like wrapped up, like fucking rubbing each other. Sorry, bro. Do you remember, do you remember with that girl? It was like, it was when I was trying to like give the four-week natural to the students. We were, we were partying and I've been doing too much Gangnam style and I have like a massive rip in my fucking jeans here. And Julia was sitting down, I was being like a porn star, but my balls kept coming out like a tea bag. And I'm like, this is how you like fuck her, like game a really hot girl. I was making out with her that night. And Julia said, look, whatever you do to me, you have to do to my cousin. And her cousin was like a big girl, like a big jelly bean. And Julia, like, she is fucking hot. She's like 10 out of 10, massive fake tits. I did a photo shoot with her at the pool. And I'm like, okay, I feel her cousin's tits. And then I feel oh, feel her cousin's massive ass. Feel Oh, kiss the cousin. Blah. Chabber the hut. Kiss. Oh, so fucking good. Then I get up the next day. We do the fucking photo shoot. We spend time together. But yeah, then I met up with her in Malmo, but she was dating a guy. So nothing, nothing happened. We spent the night together, but nothing happened. We just got to dance the night away. Anyway, that is four week natural. And the way that it works is it has a maximum of 12 students. Usually I want to have about nine. Currently I have only three signed up, which is good. Um, and likely, with the amount of like inquiries that I'm getting so far, likely by the time Wednesday starts, I'm gonna have six. So the way that works is I have two teams of three, but sometimes we can swap up the teams. And whenever I'm coaching you three guys in the club, the other three guys are allowed to come into the same club. So I have missions for you three. We're working close together like a traditional boot camp. Although what does RSD do now? It's like 11 to one with Derek. It's, we see him in Melbourne and Finland, it's crazy. So I'm focusing on you guys one night, you guys can come to the club, focus on you the next night, right? And then you guys can come to the club. And it's pretty good because I can give you a one, one line ideas. Remember this, try that, do this dare, focus on escalation tonight, whatever. And then if I have six students or seven students, then I would do an extra bonus night every, every week. So I probably do three or four nights a week, but only one or two of them is compulsory. And then three or four day game sessions, fashion. I do a Tinder photo shoot for you. So I take you out early on, take photos of you, make sure that you're looking good. Um, I put your Tinder profiles together, and then I can run your text game over the course of the program. Um, and what's really, really valuable is our day game sessions, right? So we do obviously the bookstores and the streets, but if we are on a day game session together, uh, that gives us like four or five hours both for approaching and just talking, talking about your life or your lifestyle, or your career, or psychology with girls, or reviewing a lot of interactions. It's just really a lot of time with me during the daytime. And actually, in Thailand and in Texas, I was going to CrossFit with the students as well. So I'm signed up for CrossFit starting tomorrow morning. Yeah. Actually, my dad is coming from Australia uh, tomorrow to spend time with me here. You know the Wolf of Wall Street, and like the dad comes like to make sure everything's going okay? He's like, Jordan, what the fuck is this? I'm like, fuck, sorry, dad. Why, why did you buy this fucking truck? Anyway, no guys, any, do you guys have any questions about the four week natural starting this Wednesday, going for the next five weekends? Any questions? I've already made my points clear enough. No, well that's it then. I yeah, man. One type of question, what about accommodation? We keep going, uh, uh, is, 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 you do it, you, you do it yourself. Yeah. yeah. With accommodation for four week natural, um, we, <laughs> we had one student in, uh, Havar, um, who loved the program so much, he bought the house he stayed in. He bought the whole fucking property. This obviously, you know. Um, so, you know, so some guys will, uh, they, we have a group, an organizational group. There's like five or six of us in there right now. And you can co-organize Airbnbs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so that works pretty well. And so what some guys will do is they'll do an Airbnb for 10 days and then move and then move, stuff like that, that kind of thing. We have some students who are doing it and then we have some multi-millionaires who do the program as well. I should tell you the fucking price. I think it's, uh, it is 3,800 US dollars for 34 or 35 days training. I'm starting on Wednesday in this case, 35 days training. And I believe RSD is like $3,300 for three nights in field. That's like the going price. But the way that that works, if you think about it, if I have you on program $3,800 for 34 days, rather than you know, maybe taking nine guys over the course of one month, instead of having three students on a weekend, each paying 3,300, 
and you only get three days, this way works a lot better. And I'm working with you five or six days of the week at least, and I'm available all the time as well. So that is that. I'm really excited to do it. I had such a huge program in uh, Texas with the 12 students. It was very committed for me. And those guys were like high intensity Tyler students. So that was a huge workload. And Austin's good because you can go out seven nights a week, but it's also bad because you can go out seven nights a week. Here, it's gonna be really nice to have six or seven guys, a really nice balance. Hard days training, hard days work, big weekends, to a, maybe two days to recover during the week and then back on it, maybe Wednesday night, break on Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, big weekends. I fucking love it. I was out here on the weekend already, just having a, having a ball. So if any, of you could, if any of you do have questions about starting in Amsterdam, uh, on Wednesday, let me know. If it is a very last minute decision, there is one payment plan option that I can talk to you about. Let me know about that. But that's it. That's, uh, that's the four week natural and I'm fucking excited to do it here in Holland after doing it in Sweden. I've been doing it since like 2015. 26 of them I've done myself. Um, five a year for five years, six, seven a year. Uh, so this will be on my 26th. Yeah, very, very excited. Thank you for coming out to listen to me today, guys. I think it was really fucking fantastic. And after I pack up this shit, I'll go and hang out, hang, hang out in the bar at the hotel, have a groch. How do you pronounce it? Groch. 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 Yeah, whatever. Have one of those. If any of you guys do have any immediate questions about Four Week Natural, you want to ask me right now, do that. Otherwise, come out and have a beer a little bit later. Well, after I pack this stuff up. So thanks for coming. Thank you. Cue, cue the applause. <laughs>